Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Latency in Cubase. A couple of extra features for us to look at today in order to round off our understanding of how we can interact with Latency in Cubase. If you've enjoyed this series, please check out the Patreon or YouTube member links below. Fabulous way to help support my channel. This is what I do for a living these days. The first scenario that we want to talk about today is this discrepancy we've already seen in this video series. Depending on what your buffer size is, and that's why I've got my settings up here, you're going to have a, um, a, a, an inherent system lag between um, input and output, even though Cubase generally tends to handle uh, the vast majority of the reported latencies. So with a 64 sample buffer size and a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, I'm going to get a 12 sample offset when I record this click track back into Cubase. I'll do it quickly again. That'll do us. And there we have a 12 sample offset. Depending on what you set your buffer size to, that sample offset will change. I happen to know that 128 sample buffer on my system halves that down to six samples. We can get rid of it. The way that we're going to do that is to head into Studio Setup. And I'm going to plug in a manual record shift. So this record shift value here is in samples. A positive value sets your recording, your new recording, off to the left. In other words, it accounts for lag or latency. So if I put a 12 sample lag in here, let's do exactly the same test again and see what we get. Absolutely sample perfect. The second scenario isn't quite so easy to get our heads around, so I'll step through this one a little bit more slowly. It's this option here called Adjust for Record Latency. It's a tick box all on its own. It's got nothing to do with the record shift underneath. And this is all to do with handling latency on input buses. I'm going to demonstrate this using our old friend Imager. Because as we saw earlier, Imager has a very large, over 5,000 sample latency inherent, unless it's in live mode. And the first thing that I'm going to do is put one on the original track bus. So at the moment, we're just basically establishing that no matter where this imager lives, it's not going to generate any latency. We're not going to get any inherent problems with our recordings. So this is an imager on the insert bus of the original click track. When I record it, I'm going to record a track into the loopback. And we're just going to prove that there's no implicit latency just by virtue of having this very large uh, plug-in on the system. We don't have delay compensation constrained here. This is just a regular system. Absolutely perfect. Scenario number two to really load the system up is to put a second instance of Imager on the incoming loopback track. Now this is an insert effect on the recorded track it shouldn't have anything to do with anything because it's after the recorded event's been stored. But nevertheless, I want to prove that Imager can't possibly impact anything to do with the audio stream in either direction. Cubase is still perfectly easily handling all of those latencies and everything is still being recorded absolutely perfect. So on the incoming stream into Cubase, we might have a, a compressor, an EQ, in this case, Imager. It really doesn't matter what the effect is. But putting an effect on the input bus is a whole different story. Because now this plugin is affecting the audio stream before it ever gets to the hard drive. It's not having an opportunity to get to the recorded hard drive. Cubase can't apply that latency correction. And so this is basically going to circumvent all of the safety protocols it's had up until now. And sure enough, there's a massive latency between those two. Just have a quick look in the plugin manager at the imager. Reported latency of 5,250 samples. Now there, I had to zoom in incredibly tight to make this selection zone absolutely perfect, but it is now sample perfect. And there you can see 5,250 samples latency. So this is the problem. On the input bus, uh, Cubase's inherent correction doesn't work. 
Now there's another problem with the input bus in that it's not record enabled either. So enabling constraint delay compensation isn't gonna have any effect here. If I open an instance of Imager on the input bus and enable CDC, you can see that there's no change whatsoever to the Imager uh, plugin. It hasn't engaged live mode. Whereas the instances on the live track, there's live mode engaged. So this is the one outstanding scenario that we've got where inherent plugin latency is getting past all of our safety protocols. And would you believe it? That's exactly what adjust for record latency does. So here's the same scenario, images everywhere. Now I press record one last time. and the recording is once again sample perfect. Now you could make an argument that you can engage adjust for record latency 100% of the time and leave it on. Because if you ever put insert effects on the bus, you're going to want this effect, you're going to want that latency taken care of in exactly the same way that it does everywhere else. It doesn't say this in the manual, but I think there's a processing overhead in order for this feature to make any sense, why wouldn't it be on all of the time? Because everywhere else in the system, this is done automatically and we don't have an option to disengage it. Why do we have this feature called adjust for record latency? So it must be purely a processing overhead on the presumption that many people don't put effects directly on their insert bus. And so they never need to engage it as long as you know it's there. And if you do that thing, if you put inserts on the bus, you're gonna to need to engage this effect if you don't want to see latency out of them. And that's the end of this course. Uh, hopefully that's been a comprehensive introduction to how Cubase handles latency. Now at least you know what all of the settings mean. As you can see, everything's a compromise with latency, performance versus accuracy. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. You've got to make those individual decisions on a case by case basis, depending on what your environment is. Hope you found this series useful. And if you did, please hit the like button and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.